What is up guys? It's Troy at the full setup here back with another video for you and today we're going to review this. Probably can't see the box but there should be some b-roll on screen for you right now. This is a collaboration between Ashida Audio and SMSL. This is the AO200 digital power amplifier. Now this amplifier retails for $279 um, and it goes up to 150 watts per channel but that's in two ohms in all reality it's a 50 watt per channel amplifier. Now, Ashida Audio did send this over for review, but they have in no way paid me. They no way influence what I'm gonna say in the video. As always, they are my own thoughts, my own feelings of what I think of this sweet little sounding amplifier. Now, it is incredibly similar to the already available D9 amplifier from SMSL. So I'm gonna take you in for an unboxing in a second show you all around it, show you some of the core differences there. I'm also gonna compare it to my Tangent Amster BT2 as well, cause that's been my desktop digital amplifier that I've been using for about the last year. Gonna run some sound tests and then I'll come back with my final thoughts and feelings, tell you all about the amplifier and whether I think you should buy it. Got the uh, overhead camera going, microphone, all this stuff. So hopefully I can reach this, but you might find when I put it down, it might everything might wobble and shake about a little bit, but let's get this unboxed then. So this is the SMSL AO200 by Ashida Audio. I'm sorry if I'm getting it wrong all the way through this video, but that's just how I would pronounce it. Also, you might hear some more background noise today than in my normal videos because it is hoot for a UK day. I think it's gonna get 30 degrees today, which I know is not hot compared to some of you other countries, but we don't really have air con in our houses and stuff. So I've got all the windows, doors, everything open. So. If you hear any noise, cars and stuff, I do apologize. But um, yeah, here it is in the box. Now it is quite grubby um, and that is because it came shipped in all in black wrap and it's come all the way from China as well, I think. Um, sorry if I'm getting that wrong, but it's definitely come from the other side of the world for me. So I think as it's, you know, moved around through shipping, it's got some marks on it, but that's probably why I wouldn't go for a white box. Initial impressions, you know, it just, it looks dirty. Um, but it's just a box. Do you know what I mean? And talking of other boxes that come from that side of the world most of my deep cool ones generally look like they've been kicked a few times oh wrong way around there's not really a lot else on it we've got smsl there as well so i'm going to talk about this and you know how close it is to the da9 amplifier as well this is just one that ashida audio have had made for them by smsl um smsl top in and i think a few other people do make devices for other companies they do partner with them um so here is the manual here so it's chinese on that side again apologies if i'm getting that wrong i just then there is a power cable i have opened it so all the cables are a little bit neater yeah so all the cables are a little bit neater wrap but that is the right power cable for your country now there's also this usb i've already had this out of the box i've been using it for a few weeks um and there is also this usb cable as well and i can only think that this is for firmware updates because i plugged it into my computer and i didn't get anything out of it if i do get it working as a dac which i don't think it does i'm 99 sure it doesn't i will leave a comment or update the video but i couldn't get it working from there you've then also got the bluetooth antenna as well bluetooth 5.0 but it doesn't support apt x and the d8 d9 does um test on my phone i could only get sbc working tested with other Bluetooth Aptex devices and Aptex HD devices that I've got and it work fine. Here is the remote. FN does your Bluetooth. That does all your inputs. This one's to navigate around the menus. You've got mute. And then this is for the different devices. So these are for um, other SML devices. So I think it's like the DAC and the headphone amp. That one there, you press it first and then this gives you the controls of the amp. So you, if you buy extras to go with it in the same range, you know, it is a... Sort of says it in there as well. Power amplifier, headphone amplifier is B and the DAC is C. So a little note in that as well. I need to put some batteries in there. Um, and then there is this. I don't know if that is a warranty card. It appears to be some form of warranty card to me. And then we have, then we have, let me get all this box out of the way. And here we have the amplifier. I don't know how much it weighs. It's definitely got some weight to it. So it's 0.96 kilograms, but it feels like more than that. This feels very, this feels like the sort of build you get in the higher end DAX, the sort of three to 400 pound ones. There's a lot of weight in this. Feels very nice. Now, obviously the differences, I want to talk about the D9 straight away. Um, I'll put a photo up on screen so you can just see it quickly. 
unlike the D9, the D9 has the screen, which we'll turn on in a second, have a look at it in a minute, in the middle, and the volume on this side, but it's also got these beveled corners on it. I think the D9 is a slightly better looking device, and also as well, the I think it's the SU9, whatever the DAC and the headphone amplifier are called from SMSL in the same range, have the same body as the D9. So if you buy those other devices with this, it's not going to be matchy matchy as you're building your stack. So I do think Ishida Audio for this, I'd really be pairing with SMSL to be making your own DAC and own headphone amplifier to go on top of this. There is a high res, I don't think you're going to see it there, audio sticker on there as well. I don't know what classes amps as being high res that don't have DACs in them. Over to the back, let's just zoom in. Over to the money shot side then. So you have balanced inputs. Um, there's also a standard RCA input. Dual subwoofers out, and I think the crossover is 200 hertz. Now there's the USB port. Um, I have tested this earlier. Um, I just formatted it to FAT, but I don't know if it works with XFAT as well. Um, the one thing I found, though, is it didn't let me do a menu system. So you just have to dump all your MP3s in the root. Um, I will test it to see if this skips songs and stuff with it in a minute when it's all plugged in a little bit more. Then we've got the Bluetooth antenna. And then we have the speaker inputs. Now, I did have a little look at these earlier. I would say on those, I don't know if you can quite see in there. I don't think I can get the angle, but I think about 1.5 millimeter, two millimeter, you'd have to give it a really good twist would be your limit. If you're going any fatter, although this is only 1.5 mil anyway, then you are going to want to use the banana connections on there to plug it all in. And then you have your power here as well. You see that there? So it's a switch in 100 to 240. I'll just give you a closer look at the inputs. So what do I think about the um, inputs and outputs? Well, over the D9, the one thing that this gains is a additional subwoofer output. I don't think an, it's massively needed. I don't think on something this size with speakers, you're going to be running dual subs. Some of you might think that's great, but personally, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if, if you'd be running dual subs. I ran it on my other speakers over there on my Wharfdales with my mission sub. And it worked very well and it you know it sounded really good and i'll talk about all that in a minute now the balance inputs i think some people are going to say it's a massive plus as you can see behind me i've got a focus right claret and um, i'm going to get some cables that are obviously the 6.35 millimeter jacks to the rc um to the xlr inputs that's probably what i'm going to run balanced balanced is really more for when you're doing long runs i would say when it comes to doing an audio chain but where it can be very useful as well as obviously if you've got a lot of kit like me where i've got kit all over the desk that could be extremely useful. But personally, the one thing I think this is missing is a DAC. So I want to compare it to something that you can get in the UK and in Europe. This is the Tangent Amster BT2, okay? This is a hundred and seventy pounds, but you can regularly get it for one hundred and fifty. This one's two hundred and seventy dollars, but the D9, which we're pretty much saying that's what it is, plus the additional sort of subwoofer input, this one is about £200 if you'd buy it in the UK. Now, for for the size of it all, I do prefer this one because I'm going to just probably raise this monitor up a little bit and plug it in there next to my um, Focusrite device. But I still think this is very nice. I think this is just a bit better looking. It's nice to have a screen on the front. Now, this has got Aptex HD Bluetooth. The, transmit, the um, antenna is very good on this. I can pretty much walk all the way in the bottom you know the downstairs of my house and it not very rarely ever cut out um we still have the banana connections on there as well the usb is only for charge but it's got a freaking optical input you know even just putting a low level dac it only needs to be something cheap and cheerful would really help me recommend this a lot more single subwoofer out but again i think that's all you need um it's also got rca inputs and that is i'll bring it in closer You've got an auxiliary and then there's this one as well, which is an external infrared as well. So if you've got it just popped right under your desk or something, you can just have the little IR thing popped up. So this is a lot better for installation as well. And we're going to talk about it with the sound in a minute as well, because it's 30 pounds cheaper. And you can buy it within the UK as well with this that you can't. But obviously, you know, I review products where it's international. You might be able to get this in your country. And in a lot of countries, you're not going to be able to get the Amster bt2 so so as for the specs of this little thing then it's 18.7 centimeters in width or 187 millimeters um it's 150 foot four millimeters in depth 
super compact here and 40 millimeters in height. Now this features a dual Infineon, I think it is, MA12070 digital amplifier chip, exactly the same as the DA9. It's got two of those in there. It's got exactly the same specs, basically, internally as the DA9. It's got the volume control, is the NJW1194. Like I said, the only difference I'm noticing is the Bluetooth is no app text, okay? Now, as for the power output on this thing, out of your, out of your speakers, it is a 150 watts per channel in two ohms. But when it comes to reality, this thing is 50 watts per channel into 8 ohms, and that's probably going to be what most speakers you're using. And then it's 90 watts per channel into 2 ohms. The power consumption is 40 watts on this device as well. As I already mentioned, it weighs about a kilogram, but to me, it's feeling heftier. It's feeling heftier. It's got a signal to noise ratio of 110 dB and a channel separation of 98 dB and a THD of 0.00. .00 percent there we go and it's very nice looking i really do like the look of this and i like that it's low profile it's gonna fit right in over there it's going over there in that hole there's not a hole there yet so we'll move the monitor up first because that'll be an expensive slam it on top of the dbx install right so i turned it all on here's the little remote we'll turn it off Turn the device back on, that's fine. So like I said, you've got the A, B, and C to change them all. You can mute it, and then you get a little red mute symbol come up on it as well. FN is Bluetooth, apparently. I don't know if that just pairs it or changes it. I can't see that it's actually doing much. Now, this one here is your input, so now you can go USB, balanced, or unbalanced. As you can see, you get a different symbol for each one. Now, if you press the middle button, you then get into the settings on here. And just pressing the center button takes you back, okay? It's going to be a bit hard to show you the remote and um, also show you what's going on. Now, you've got the EQ here. Now, I find direct is the most neutral sounding of it, but you sort of get those pitfalls of a digital amplifier where it doesn't sound, you know, it sounds like it's just lacking a little bit of something, a little bit of oomph and a little bit of top end. Now, the SDP one, I would say, is oh, it's sort of like a loudness maximizer, but it's a bit different. And I find that's the one that definitely works. And I, I say loudness maximizer because it works better at lower volumes. And especially with my Kev speakers that we're going to test it out on, they just don't sound very good at low volumes. You've got to drive them to get the most out of them. Um, and that one works, but it just feels like it's doing a bit more. It doesn't really cut the mid range on it. It is, well, it is a bass and treble boost, but I don't know. It just feels like there's a little bit more about it. It sort of turns a digital amp, makes it sound a little bit more like a class AB. That's what I, that's what I would say. That's my two cents on that one you can then also adjust the base as well i don't know what you can go up to up to 10 db and the same with the treble and then there is also so soft clipping which i'm going to have off and then there is a dimmer so you can say that's always i want the screen always on and then there is a brightness as well so you can just adjust that if you don't want something super bright on your desk so there you go then there is a unboxing and just a quick little show of the menu system on the smsl ao 200 from ashida audio we're going to run a sound test and i'm going to come back and tell you whether you should buy this amp um, and talk about it a little bit more sound quality wise compared to that tangent amster bt2 
So there we go then, there was the sound test. I know it's always a bit dodgy, isn't it, when you're listening to, you know, speakers that someone's recording with microphones on different speakers, different DACs, through headphones, all of this stuff. It's quite hard to assess, isn't it, really, to the point I think that you probably shouldn't put it in the video, but then lots of people will whinge that it's not in the video. So you can't win, can you? You can't win on that front there. Um, now, when I was testing that, I was using the SDB setting, okay? Um, that's the um, filter that I was using, the EQ effect that I was using. So when it's on its neutral setting, I would only run it neutral if you were running a subwoofer with it. I found that it sounded quite thin on neutral, okay? Um, it sounded like a digital amplifier. There were obviously things missing that, you know, I would have liked to have had in that sound. It was just the bottom end just wasn't enough. When I plugged my sub into it um, on the neutral setting, it sort of, you know, covered up some of that mask, some of it, but that's what the SDB profile does it just gives it that bit of oomph um that bit of sort of sound stage and comparing it listening to it, i know i didn't have a uh, test of the tangent amster there as well 
I preferred the Amster at first, especially when you've got it on the neutral setting. I would say that the Amster's already been pre-tuned, okay? It's already been set up to, you know, give that extra bit of sound, you know, take over some of the pitfalls of a digital amplifier. So that was ahead for me, okay? And obviously that amp is cheaper, but once you've got it in that SDB mode, the SMSL takes it for me. Smaller footprint as well, so I can fit it under my desk. Um, I know it doesn't have the digital input, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second, but when paired with just something cheap and cheerful, like for today's video, the DAC X6 Mark II, which you can pick up relatively cheap, even drives the DT990 250 ohms pretty well. You know, that's all that you need there, but there was just a bit more about it. There was a bit more scale, a little bit more grandness to it. Everything just sounded a bit fatter to me, okay? There was just a bit more wallop. I don't know. Audio terms, it's just, you could just waffle on audio crap terms, can you, for the entire video? Um, you could probably just make up words and use them if you wanted to as well. But yeah, that's my input on it. That is my take, okay? Now, the other reason as well why I've got this, I've actually sold the Tangent Amster halfway through making this video because the plan was always that I was going to sell one um, that I didn't, the one that I didn't like as well, because that's how I fund all the extra stuff for the channel. Um, and part of the reason is, although it has got a digital input, one thing I didn't mention in the review is that the Amster is, because I think obviously it's like a European device, um, a lot of stuff now, and it's an absolute pain in the ass for things like sound bars, surround sounds, hi-fi amps, all that sort of stuff, is that it's got an auto-off feature, so it has to turn off. It turns off after 15 minutes, and there's no way to address it. Now, although it's got auto-on, the auto-on only works on the RCA input which is fine for me because I was running DACs into it. But if anyone was using that digital at a desk, it's quite annoying because obviously you listen to music for a little bit on your computer or you're playing some games and then you stop and then it turns off. You have to turn it back on again. It doesn't wake up on a digital connection. That's obviously not so bad if you're just using it as a hi-fi music setup because you're probably playing some albums. If you're playing your music digitally, you've got auto playing, all of that stuff. But if you're using it at, at strictly at a desk, that is where the SMSL, the AO200, yeah, the SMSL AO200 wins it for me, paired with a little cheap DAC. I know it, it sends the price up a bit more, but yeah, that's the amp that I'm going to be using on my desk now as well. Another thing worth mentioning as well with like the speaker test and things like that, I've only got one of these cheap IKEA desks, so and the way that they're positioned, it doesn't give the best sound. I definitely lose a bit of bass. I think that's why I quite like the Kefs as well, because they're near field. They're almost like studio monitors with a hi-fi sound. Um, it means I don't have to hump them too much. When I had the Wharfdale on the desks to really get it to that level that I wanted, there was just too much horrible bass rumble from just not having good position and not having the speakers on stands like, like my speakers that I've got over there. But it's a desktop amp, so I wanted to show it in a desktop situation. But it comes down to, would I buy this amplifier? That is a very difficult choice here. So it all comes down to personal preference. I was sent both the AO200 and the Tangent Amster BT2. I was sent them to a review and I'm allowed to keep both of them. Great. Okay. But personally, I wouldn't buy either if I was buying an amplifier. This is strictly personal preference. It isn't a, you know, a thing down to any of the amplifiers is that for me, if I was spending £200 on an amplifier, I would go for a Class AB one. I know it's big. I know it's bulky, but I would just pop it under my desk, set it to the volume where I know is nice, and then just have a DAC that I can use as a preamp and adjust the volume on there. Um, and for me, that's just because of the extra sound that you get. Obviously, you can get things like the Onkyo um, range, so the A9010 and the one that's replaced it, the A9110 as well. I would definitely recommend those amplifiers. You can get amplifiers from Cambridge Audio in that price as well, some and some entry-level Yamaha and Sony amplifiers. They're all going to give these a, just an absolute ass kicking, but that's not all that's just what I want and that's what I like if you want something that's super compact nice and slim that can go under your desk you know as you see in there in the video I've got it all just you know it's just got such a small footprint I'll always find somewhere to put this you could even fix it under your desk as well with a couple of L brackets you know just so it's you know right by your hand can't see what I'm doing there but you know what I mean then this is a very good amplifier but like I said the only thing that I would consider is that a sheet of audio this goes to you you need to make some other stuff to go in the range with this because personally if i was going to buy it the da9 with one less subwoofer input would be the way that i go just because i know it's got the same shape and footprint that if i decided that i wanted you know their dac or if i wanted their headphone amplifier it's all going to look super nice on it so that's that's a big con for me there um also as well you know i would just the balance input 
I think more people, if you said low level, just a bog standard entry level digital input versus balanced, you know, this is the digital. That's what would happen. So yeah, personally, that's what I'd go for. I am going to run it balanced out of my thing anyway. So it's something I'm going to use. So I shouldn't complain about it too much. I'm just waffling there at the end. But yeah, very impressed with it. Um, but just lots of options. You're just in a price point when there's lots of options. So that's all I'm trying to get across. I'm not trying to crap on the product at all. I'm just, I have a different taste when I'm spending that amount of money. So yeah, I'll uh, leave it at that. Um, if you like the video, make sure you subscribe. Any questions about that amplifier, let me know. If it's free, six, 12 months down the line, let me know. I can tell you how it's getting on, if there's been any cons, anything going wrong with it. Um, you know, but hopefully it's all going to be super smooth. So I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.